After the success of China's latest space mission that landed a rover on the far side of the moon, what is the significance for space exploration? And Russia's ongoing pivot to Asia policy is likely to see closer cooperation with China, both economically and politically. What will be the likely impact on the rest of the world from such a partnership? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you from Beijing. I'm Liu Xin. Fresh images of the moon's far side have been taken for the first time from the surface itself after China's Chang'e 4 lander and rover U2 second or Jade Rabbit second took pictures of one another on Friday, signaling the complete success of China's latest lunar mission, the first ever landing on that side of the moon. Scientific tasks for Chang'e 4 included low-frequency radio astronomical observations surveying the terrain as well as detecting mineral composition. China is cooperating with a number of international partners for the mission, three of which are from Europe. China and the U.S. also shared data for this lunar mission despite a 2011 U.S. law banning space exchanges with China. A former NASA astronaut hailed Chang'e Force soft landing as a tremendous achievement on the part of humanity. But the adventure has also raised debates as to whether China's moon landing has set the stage for a new space race with the U.S. So how tremendous is this mission and are we likely to see more of a space race or cooperation in the near future? Joining our discussion from London is Mark Hemsel, president of the British Interplanetary Society, Professor Robert F. Wimmer Schweingruber from the University of Kiel and here in Beijing, Zhang Fan, associate professor of astronomy at Beijing Normal University. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, I would like to go to Mr. Hensel Hello. first. The uh, China National Space Administration, or CNSA, on um, Friday, the 11th, released a 360-degree panoramic photo taken by a camera installed on top of Chang'e 4's lunar, lunar probe that's pieced together from 80 photos, and you're looking at the cylindrical projection. Now, China declared complete success on Friday after the lander and the rover took picture of each other. Mr. Hemsel, what's the significance of this move? I think uh, there's, there's two aspects of that. There's the scientific interest in that we're exploring a bit of the moon that we've never seen before. But there's also uh, a technical significance in that it demonstrates a new capability for China and also a sort of a variation of technologies that other countries have got in remotely controlling planetary probes, which is pretty much the highest order of technical achievement that space programs do at the moment. How would you compare this landing with uh, the previous landing involving human, human beings on the moon? Because that, has, that was done c decades ago, right, by the United States and by the former Soviet Union. How would you compare the technical uh, achievements of these two different kinds of landings, Mr. Hensel? Um, right, okay. I think you've got to put the man landings, which only America has managed to do, right at the top um, because of the scope of what they did and the scientific achievements that it created. But as you pointed out, that's not being done anymore. And if you look at what's being done now, um, it's difficult to compare things like space stations with planetary probes. But technically, this is as difficult as people are doing at the moment in space exploration. Okay, uh, let me go to Bob in Germany. What, do we, what we saw on the photo just now, uh, we saw lots of small craters surrounding the drove, and according to the deputy director of the uh, National Astronomical Observation, Observatories of China and uh, commander-in-chief of the ground application system of Chang'e 4, Mr. Li Chunlai, he said that that's really thrilling that we are seeing lots of these... Uh, um, small craters. What's thrilling about that, Bob? Well, first of all, it's thrilling to be on the far side of the moon. I think that's uh, just incredible to think that we have something there now, that China landed something there now. The other thing is uh, to see just how uh, the environment in our solar system gardens the lunar soils. That's a uh, the scientific term that you say you, you're redoing the lunar soils at all times. 
Uh, so that's something which can now be investigated very microscopically with, with the images which we've just seen. Mm -hmm. It's also said that the rugged terrain will pose great challenges for the planning of the route of the rover. How are we going to uh, understand that? So, in terms of uh, future scientific experiments that that to be carried that are to be carried out uh, by Ra Jade Rabbit 2, um, what can we imagine there, Bob? Well, I could imagine it will be rather difficult to plan the route from one place to another if you want to investigate a rock from near, from closer, to take the images of a, of a certain rock. You need to be careful which path you choose to get there because there are rocks in the way, there are small craters in the way. Uh, that will be one of the challenges for the operators of the rover, of U2. Mm -hmm. um, Professor Zhang, this is the fifth time that uh, um, China has uh, succeeded in terms of its uh, lunar exploration and it has been a fifth consecutive success. What has been the guarantee for such high rate of success? Uh, well, first of all, um, the Chinese space engineers are extremely careful. I would actually argue they're too careful. They can afford to take a bit more risk. But anyhow, uh, before launches, there's a period of reminiscing. So basically, everybody drops what they're doing and just think what could possibly go wrong, not just for their own part. And they get rewarded if they can think of anything that could possibly go wrong. So this kind of carefulness really helps a lot. And then also, the Chinese space program is very methodical. Um, it doesn't go for big, flashy thing all in one go. For example, the uh, Chang'e mission, this is Chang'e 4, you, you already have three successful missions before that, each one a bit more difficult than, than the last one. Mm -hmm. So this is possible uh, because the consistency in the Chinese space program, um, in contrast to some other countries, for example, in the U.S., when you have a new administration, you tend to have a new pet project going on, yeah. and old one tends to get killed. Um, so that couldn't have been Discontinuity sometimes uh, causes problems, but that's not a problem in China. So yeah. It's, uh, it's Just <coughs> now we were, we were looking at images of the actual landing of the rover on the surface of the moon, which is quite fascinating. Let me again ask uh, Professor Zhang, why has China imagined doing such an adventure? Uh, what um, do China's latest lunar steps mean to its space program in general? Well, uh, so first of all, Chang'e 4 was actually a uh, backup uh, probe for Chang'e 3, so this was not going to fly right from the start. Uh, and then people decided it's, it's worthwhile doing a back of the moon survey because, well, the uh, ge geology is different, uh, there's a lot more craters, uh, the situation uh, with, the, with the sound and everything is different. Um, I'm really happy that they did that because uh, as an astronomer, I'm kind of hoping that all these small incremental steps in the end leads to a lunar base that's on the backside of the moon uh, facing away from Earth because we're facing a, a, a problem with astronomy on Earth because uh, first of all, the Earth's atmosphere is not transparent to a lot of wavelengths, so that's difficult enough. And then in the future, you're going to have satellites blasting Wi-Fi signals down to Earth. That's catastrophic for radio astronomy. So we're really hoping to go to the backside of the moon um, to, to have it shield, the, uh, shield all these noise from Earth. So okay. I hope okay. that's what happens. Yeah, Mr. Hemsel, uh, observing from the UK, um, how do you think uh, technically challenging this whole mission has uh, been? And uh, how do you think the Chinese team has fared so far? Um, well, as I said, it is very challenging. Uh, you've got to relay the signals between the land and Earth via another satellite that is almost half a million kilometres away from the Earth. Um, and that's, that's not easy to do. Um, I think it is also the, the, the point about China being careful, it's being very professional about its space industry um, and it's demonstrating that it's on a par with any other nations in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, during this mission, uh, China actually cooperated, as I, as I said, with several foreign countries, including um, Netherlands, Germany, and Sweden, and also Saudi Arabia. Bob, what, mm. does, this, what does this uh, success mean for these countries, such as Germany? What cooperation opportunities are you looking at here in outer space uh, with their Chinese counterparts? 
We're looking forward to, to uh, a lot of cooperations also inside China with uh, different universities inside China. Uh, we will have workshops to, uh, for scientists in China to teach them how to analyze our data, how to get science out of the data, and I'm pretty certain the other countries will do that as well. I think it's, for us it's a fantastic opportunity to work together with China with uh, all these extremely bright uh, students and uh, PhDs in planetary science, in uh, rocket science, in physics, and whatever else there is. Uh, according to the China Daily, the uh, CNSA and the NASA actually had close communication between each other, including the use of NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Satellite to observe the landing. The two sides have been discussing cooperation, according to media reports, in lunar and deep space exploration over the second half of last year and shared information before the launch of Chang'e 4. And the uh, CNSA said that that was the first cooperation, though at a rudimentary level between the two sides since 2011, when a U.S. federal law uh, forbid U NASA from bilateral cooperation with China. Professor Zhang, are we seeing a potential thawing in cooperation relations between the two sides? Well, I certainly hope so. So when the uh, when U.S. Congress passed that, that that law in 2011, that was such a mess. Um, implementing it caused a lot of problems as well. Um, so. This time, I'm really surprised that that happened, mm -hmm. and I'm not involved in either of the thinking of, of, of the either side, uh, so I can only speculate. Uh, my guess is that um, U.S. has gradually changed its opinion. It's becoming less dismissive of Chinese space program, and it now it wants to get involved, to get in the door and see what's, what China is actually doing, and to get to get more information. Uh, so China basically is said, oh, okay, we have nothing to hide, so welcome to, to come and watch. And they told the U.S. side, the uh, landing site, the landing time, and the, uh, the U.S. In, in return kindly provided the orbit of their, 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 their orbiter um, and basically telling China what kind of information we can get. And hopefully they will pass on that, that, that information, that data, so Chinese engineers can tune their future missions. Um, so regardless of whether this step was taken uh, based on mutual trust right now or, or a, a, a desire to get more information, um, it's always good to get the uh, conversation started. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So Mr. Hemsel, uh, from your observation, are we seeing hmm. the Chang'e formation likely to intensify some U.S. rivalry or uh, provide some kind of uh, thawing in relationship between the two sides? I think the uh, U.S. Uh, maneuvers are entirely political. They're nothing to do with an assessment of China's technical capability, which is uh, demonstrably good. And there's contacts through organizations like the International Astronautical Federation, where the Chinese are fully engaged with that uh, in the same way as other nations. So um, I think the, the U.S. relations, which, to be honest, can be difficult even with Europe, let alone countries like China uh, is, is entirely political posturing and, and nothing to do with the technical aspects of this. Okay. Also, some media, some Western media said that China intends to be a space power to walk on the moon and to eventually establish a lunar base and that Chinese government has compared the moon to the South mm. China Sea or to um, Tibet and asteroids to the East China Sea and that making a very clear um, geopolitical comparison with what's happening in space. Bob, what is your understanding of China's inten intention or ambition here? And uh, what uh, do you perceive is China's attitude towards uh, international collaboration in space exploration? Well, from, from what I've seen now is that we have uh, four countries contributing to Chang'e 4. Uh, I would hope that this is a sign that China is willing to cooperate with the rest of the world, certainly with Chang'e 4 it, it is doing that, and that this is uh, a thawing on the Chinese side, uh, a willingness to work together with scientists worldwide. I've experienced that in the past decades uh, many times. So at least scientifically we've been working together closely for a long, long time. And if we can get science to influence politics a little bit so that uh, science helps politics thaw and uh, the world to be more peaceful, I think that would be fantastic. 
Okay. Um, final question, Professor Zhang, very briefly. Will China's lunar probe or China's space program be exclusively by China for China? Can China afford that? And uh, um, what is China's idea of doing this for humanity? Well, so far, uh, obviously, it's not doing that just for yourself, uh, as this mission already shown. And in particular, in other missions, uh, such as the uh, new X-ray telescope in the planning stage, that's also working with Europeans. So right now, what China is providing is, is, is a launch platform and, and a satellite, and a lot of times the uh, European countries and other countries provide scientific instruments. So in that way, China is is, is collaborating with these countries to, to advance science. Uh, every country contribute to their best parts. So, okay, we're going to leave it there. Many thanks to my guest, Mark Hemsell, Professor, uh, President of the British Interplanetary Society in London, Professor Robert F. Wimmer Schweingruber from the University of Kiel, and here in Beijing, Zhang Fan, Associate Professor of uh, Astronomy at Beijing Normal University. We'll be taking a short break, and when we come back, as Russia and China cooperate or celebrate seven decades of diplomatic relations this year, what will be this uh, relations impact for the rest of the world? Stay with me.